Welcome to the first lesson um, on digital learning. Um, and we are starting a new unit and it's called interpersonal relationships. And so hopefully you can see the things I'm gonna be doing here. Um, and the first thing I want you to notice is we're gonna get a look at this PowerPoint and this is what you'll be looking at. In the notes on Google Classroom, you were to have gone to YouTube and watch this video. And then I'm going to be guiding you through the next several slides on the eight concepts for interpersonal relationship. With that, you also need to make sure that you are kind of following along with this assignment right here. So that's also in Google Classroom. Um, there are eight areas to think about with interpersonal communication. And I'm gonna be kind of going over each one of those. Um, your job is to download the assignment, this worksheet, and then make sure that when you are um, uh, listening to the video presentation on the slides, you're kind of thinking about the areas where I'm talking about. Uh, and then you will just put in three to five bullet points for the areas of, of interpersonal communication. So I'm gonna be toggling back and forth, so hopefully it won't be too confusing at times. Uh, this is all new, uh, and I definitely want your feedback on um, what it's like. So here we go, so we're gonna start going here. So hopefully I won't be in the way of the video. The good thing is you'll have the PowerPoint that you can download yourself and keep. So when we ever get ready to do a test, all the information is there for you so you don't have to take notes on it. But I definitely want you to kind of think about what we're doing as we go. So these are the eight areas for social and professional interpersonal um, situations. And so we're gonna deal with each one of them. So the first one is making introductions. Now on this slide, you'll see the things to make sure you include. So when you are introducing someone, you need to make sure you include their name and your name. And make sure you say it clearly, especially if it's someone with a unique name or if it's um, a loud uh, situation. Uh, if it's just a small uh, group get, gathering together, you probably don't need to scream it. But if you're in a large, larger group and there's a lot of people talking around you, make sure you're clear and loud with it. You want to make sure you say their titles uh, and definitely the relevance of why that person is here. So as you look down there, it says, Kelly, I'd like to introduce Donetta Powell, and it goes on. So I want you to think about this situation here. <clears throat> You're in a group of two or three people, and you know one of them, but you don't know the other person. And so if you know that that situation is going on, you might want to introduce yourself. And so if you are going to introduce yourself, you would extend your hand. Um, you want to make sure you um, give you a nice handshake with them. Obviously not right now. We are doing social distancing, but in a situation. And you would say, hi, my name is Russell Larson. I am a teacher of Rutland Christian. I teach eighth grade U.S. history and Bible, and I also teach high school speech and debate. Now, if you are introducing me to them, you would say, oh, by the way, this is Mr. Larson. He teaches at Brentwood Christian. He teaches eighth grade U.S. history and Bible along with um, speech and debate in high school. And so you would also want to include why they're there. Um, I'm, you know, he is at this gathering because it is a group of uh, current and former Brentwood teachers and students. It's kind of like an alumni gathering. So you want to make sure you make, make everybody feel comfortable. You probably have been in a group with two or three. You knew one, but you didn't know the other, and that's awkward. So start thinking about that. So here's some um, things to follow here. Now, the second thing. In a social and professional situation, making apologies is critical and crucial. If you did make a mistake, or if you have um, a reason to apologize, the first step there is you need to name and claim it. So you need to say, I am sorry for making you feel X, or I am sorry for marking a paper wrong. Uh, I am sorry for whatever. Make sure you're clear on what you're sorry for. And again, it's all about the sincerity of the apology. You need to sometimes offer an explanation of why. Well, I thought 
this was this, or I misunderstood the directions on the assignment. I misunderstood what your question was, I apologize. And again, depending on the situation, you, you name it and you claim it. You offer an explanation of why you're making the apology. Now, you need to say, sure, it's like, what can I do to make it right? Now, sometimes you can't make things right, but by offering to make things right, it helps out. I, I'm sorry, I marked this question wrong on your test. Let me go to RenWeb and, and let me change it. Now, I might not be able to do it right now, so please make sure you follow up later. And if I forget to do it, let me know. So that puts some ownership on both parties involved. Keep it brief. You don't want to continue to go on and on and on because then it's like you really aren't sincere about it. Take time to read that little part down at the bottom. Again, it's not very uh, flattering, the person, and they're having to make sure they apologize for it. Giving directions is the third thing. Now, this could direct the example we're doing here is making sure someone knows how to go someplace, maybe if they're traveling. So I'm going to demonstrate about giving directions for this assignment. So communicating the goal. This is all about interpersonal communication. What you need to do is you need to first make sure you have watched the YouTube video. That was the first post on there. The second thing you're doing is watching this Zoom presentation following along with the slideshow. You should have already downloaded the first eight slide sheet so you can paraphrase. When you are done watching the YouTube uh, video, when you're done watching the Zoom presentation that you're watching now, your assignment is to write down three to five ideas, you can bullet point those, on the first eight slide assignment. Then you will upload into Google Classroom no later than Friday, April 3rd, the, um, the assignment to get credit for you. So again, first, you should have watched the YouTube video. Second, make sure you've downloaded the first eight slides. Third, you're watching the Zoom presentation, kind of what I'm showing you right now. And the fourth thing you want to do is upload that first um, eight slide assignment into Google Classroom before Friday, um, April 3rd. On that note also, I'll go ahead and further give you some clarifications later on your original oratory. Make sure you read that as well. Um, remember, treat everyone equally. If they don't understand, make sure you clarify. And that's where you can use those nonverbal uh, communication to figure it out. Unfortunately, I can't see you. We might try a Zoom meeting once a week in speech, kind of see where everybody is. Fourth thing, making requests. You're probably pretty good at this, but in the workplace, in more of a professional situation, you need to make sure who you ask. There's no sense in me asking Mr. Weed if I can do something if he doesn't have the power, the authority, to grant it. So it's kind of like making sure you know everybody around. So if I want to go on a field trip, like we were going to go to the food bank uh, as a freshman class uh, service project, we can't go now. But the first thing I had to do was I had to ask Ms. Hagen, is there a bus driver available for the day we want to go? Once she clarified, yes, then I went to Ms. Johnson to make sure the date was good. So you kind of have to know who to ask first. Uh, make sure you give that level of assertiveness. Is it something you really want? you need to make sure that you are assertive yet tactful because if you become too assertive, well then they'll say no. And you've been in that situation I'm sure before. Make sure you're very specific with your request because if you're not specific with, with your request, then it might be denied and you're like, why, what, why? Be very specific. I know a lot of times we like to kind of be uh, omit some of the facts because we know if we told the whole story, maybe um, the situation wouldn't be granted. Again, determine when is the best situation. You know, if you ask your parents certain things, they're at different levels. Um, right now, I'm sure it's kind of crazy at your house. I apologize. Um, if there's a lot of you there, if your mom and dad are having to work from home, your brothers and sisters, it's crazy right now. I can get it. So kind of think about the situation and then make sure you sell some of the deadlines. Say, look, I need to make sure I have this done by X. Can you let me know? Look at the same one. When you're asking questions, again, be assertive because if you want an answer, Make sure you let the person know you really need to answer that. Uh, make sure you're courteous because sometimes we you know, use that tact. Uh, make sure you're specific, just like with the request. 
And what's the relevance of the question? So sometimes people like to ask questions just to ask questions. Well, make sure the question is relevant to the topic. Uh, also, when you're asking questions, think about has that question already been asked? If the question has already been asked, you should have been listening a little more carefully, uh, or maybe if the question was asked and you didn't understand the, the answer that was given, this is when you can ask for a clarifying question. Um, so you see down the bottom, uh, is some examples uh, on there. And again, sincerity, as it says, goes a long way. Now, when you're answering questions, again, tact, uh, sometimes, I'm guilty, I know, of maybe inserting a little bit of sarcasm. Um, depends on the situation, depends on if it's a social versus professional, making sure you're courteous, make sure you're specific, and again, the relevance of the question. Uh, and remember, there is never a bad question, and the only bad question is the question that's been uh, not asked. That makes a huge difference. Telephone etiquette, now, I kind of think this is kind of funny, again, we don't answer a house phone um, often, but when you are calling someone and you want to leave a message with them, make sure that you're courteous. Make sure you're specific with your name, um, your phone number. Make sure you are giving clear information on why you called. Do you want them to reply to you? And if so, how do you want them to reply to you? If you are just calling to verify, usually that's good enough. So a lot of times the, um, the dentist office will call and they'll say, can you please call to confirm your appointment? All you have to do is call back and say, hi, this is Russell Larson. Yes, I received your phone call. I'm confirmed for my disappointment. But if it's something like, no, I have to change my disappointment, then you can offer a few suggestions of different dates, especially if it's a phone call and you have to leave a message. Make sure you think about the time of day. Um, I get up at 5.15, 5.30 every day. I forget that sometimes that I send text messages out way too soon, especially if people don't have their uh, phones set to uh, do not disturb, text messages goes off. So make sure you're clear with that. Uh, and again, if you are leaving a message, make sure you are enunciating and using a pleasant voice, uh, offering criticism and receiving criticism. It's both sides. Uh, when you are giving the criticism, you think of it from one point of view. If you are receiving it, it definitely thinks like um, someone is attacking you. So if you want to give criticism, make sure you flip it and think about how would I appreciate someone giving me this? And think about how you appreciate um, the being told that you need to work on something or change something. Uh, and again, you, you cannot be defensive. Um, when you are receiving the criticism, especially if it's someone who's trying to help you. If it's a friend, I know sometimes you're like, mm, really, I don't care about um, what you think about that. But if the person is being very sincere with you, um, think about that. And a lot of it is that interpersonal communication here and who's giving it and who's receiving it. So the last thing again, uh, this is reality, de dealing with people with gender, ethnicity, and age. Now, using all this technology, trust me, it is a little bit out of my comfort zone. I, I don't like teaching to a screen. That's kind of weird right now. Uh, I do like to teach it in front of audience because you get that feedback. But this is the part that uh, you need to be very specific with the interpersonal relationship. If you are dealing with someone older than you, be a little more um, giving and patient, I guess. Uh, you can ask Mr. Mayfield. I have bugged him a lot about using this technology, and he's been very patient with me. Um, when you're talking about um, the difference of ethnicity, there is different cultural beliefs, there's different ideas among that. Uh, be sensitive to trigger words, possibly, when we're talking about ethnicity uh, and gender as well. So again, I like the bottom there is, uh, treat people as people first. And again, understanding there are differences. All right, so this was our first lesson. Um, let me see, I'm gonna stop sharing the PowerPoint right now. And so, uh, I know a whole lot of Larson right now, I apologize. So you need to make sure that you have watched the, um, the YouTube video on interpersonal relationship. You have downloaded the first eight slides assignment um, as a worksheet. You have watched this Zoom presentation, and now you're gonna go back and put three to five bullet points 
onto those first eight slides and then you're going to upload that into the assignment area that's on Google Classroom. Uh, and so make sure you do that. Don't wait to the last minute. Uh, it is due Friday, April the 3rd at 11.59 p.m. and then it locks out. I'll be monitoring to make sure that you're getting things done. So again, um, we're going to just do two lessons this week, so look for a lesson later on that'll be due as well. All right, take care. Uh, God bless, and I miss you guys. Bye.